Okay, this is the second in a series of videos that are made for beginners. Basically, I'm just showing a technical drawing. I'd suggest that you try and make that drawing happen yourself in Fusion 360 and then go back to the rest of the video and see how I did it just to see if there's any there are any techniques you can learn or um, if you got stuck in drawing it then you'll get some answers out of it so uh, go back and look at the first one if you want more information but the idea is I'm just taking these from a couple books about technical drawings or engineering drawings and trying to translate them into Fusion 360 which is a pretty common practice whether you're an artist a furniture maker a, a industrial designer whatever the idea is that you probably came up with drawings on on your own without Fusion 360 on paper or a cardboard model or something. You, you have dimensions and now you're just trying to execute in Fusion. That's really what this tool is best at. So um, that's this getting good at sketches is really an important goal and that's the idea here. So let's look at this. Um, I think this is the last one that I'm going to do that's actually just from a 2D drawing. Uh, then we're going to move into 3D uh, projections and see if we can we can model them the same way. So I'm going to uh, just look at this shear plate and try and make this happen in Fusion. So again, I'm going to start out by making a new component because that's always the best practice. I'll call it shear plate and now I can start my sketch. I'll create it on the front plane here. And uh, there really, you know, I would say there really isn't any particular place that is the origin, but I do see this s kind of star there in the in the drawing. I'll just take that as my uh, starting point. It doesn't really matter. I could start anywhere out here and then um, then lock it to the origin some other time. But I, I guess I will just do this, right? So uh, the diameter of this hole, it looks like is 0.15. I'm assuming because the other one is also 0.15. No, 0.17. Sorry, it's just 17. So let's do 17. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an important thing. There isn't anything in any of these drawings that we should look at and say, well, I assume it's the same as something else. Everything in these drawings is specified, so there really shouldn't be anything. Unless, unless there was a note here like there was in the first one that said all of the holes are the same size, then there really should be a dimension here. The other thing is in the last drawing, I looked uh, at it, at the dimensions and I thought, ah, oh, this is probably inches. Let's see if I'm in millimeters. I am. And you can see it says metric in the, the drawing. So we're in good shape. I will uh, make that other circle. Why not? I'll make it out here. And this one is 15. This time I'll just type it in as I'm drawing it. And I can escape and hit D for dimension and just add a dimension between these because I'm right there. 73 millimeters. Okay, so um, already I've got, you know, this, this one is blue and this one is black. So what we're trying to get to is to have everything in the sketch black and that means it's fully constrained. The fact that I can do this means something is off. Now, I know from the drawing that these two need to be horizontal from each other, these two points. So let me just add a horizontal constraint and now they're both black. Looking good. So um, I think at this point, I'm just going to make kind of a an awful drawing of, uh, or an awful version of the drawing that's there. And then I will uh, go back and fix it using sketch dimensions and sketch constraints. So here I go. Got all of the lines I need, but they're not the correct dimensions or shapes. So uh, this is an interesting drawing because it's it actually has, you know, FG here is uh, 61. Uh, millimeters. Now, I don't want to do this because that's a different dimension. I'm going to do this one, and that should be 61. Uh, this dimension, EF, is 87. This dimension, DE, is 57. I'll move that over and hit D again for dimension. And this dimension here, CD is 35. Okay, now, if these dimensions aren't, you know, are too difficult to get to show up correctly, you can right click and say that this is supposed to be a, an aligned dimension. And now it'll stay that way. Okay, CD is 35. BC is 40. This big one, A, B. Oh, it looks like I missed something here. Oh, no. Okay. B, A, B is 94. This A, K is... Oh, it doesn't... It, it's blank there, so it'll resolve itself once we get everything else figured out. I'll do D for dimension again. 
and this one should be JK53. And JH, HJ is 85. And this last one is GH48. Okay, so obviously it's not right. Everything's kind of wonky. And let's start adding the uh, angles. So from here to here is 105. From here to here, whoops. From here to here is also 105. Now it says 105. It doesn't say it's the same as the other one. So we're not using an equal constraint or anything like that. We're actually putting the numbers in here just as they're, they are in the drawing. If I ever needed a change here, if this one became 110, I'd want to be able to just see that this is 105 and it's going to change to 110. Uh, it's not part of the design intent that these two are identical or it would show that in the drawing. So we're not going to assume anything about that. Uh, I'm going to go between here and make this 150. And here it looks like 135. From here to here, does not have, have uh, degrees, that's okay. I will just move over here. That's 60. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Interesting. Okay, so this actually this is the first time I've really seen a message that tells me what the problem is. So D19 is 60 degrees. So somewhere else in here, there's a 60 degree angle. Well, no, I guess it's that one. That didn't help me at all. That's D19. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep moving, see what else we can do. We'll get back to that. Uh, this one is 90, so it actually has a perpendicular constraint already. And this one is supposed to be... 150. Now it seems like for whatever reason I've got too many constraints here and it's locking me in. Now I think that's probably because something there are some extra constraints here that aren't supposed to be there. So for example this one is a perpendicular constraint. Now it's it's perpendicular to something I'm not sure what uh, pro this one. So this one is when I click this you can see they're both highlighted so it's made a perpendicular constraint between these two and that's not necessarily a thing so I'm gonna delete that and now I should be able to um, put in the right the right angles here okay that's an interesting thing to note. Um, what else this one should be so uh, the technique I have for making these drawings really sloppy is so that um, constraints aren't, crea aren't created automatically I put them in myself and uh, in this case, you know, the fact that this and this were accidentally uh, perpendicular kind of um, and it made that constraint for me was kind of, uh, I don't know, it was just, uns uns it, was just uns it was surprising and something that um, that can creep up on you. Now I'm looking to try and figure out why this is, why this looks like that. Mm. 60 degrees, this is 90 degrees, 150, 105, 105, 120, 150, 135. Okay, I don't know, we'll keep going. So the distance between here and here should be 24. The uh, Let's see. Well, you know, I don't see, uh, I, okay, so, hmm, it looks like this is, uh, should be vertical to this point, according to the drawing. So now everything is fully constrained, but this does not look right. So uh, let's see what's going on here. KA is, is not defined, but all these others are. So JH should be 85, 53 for this JK. Uh, GH is 48, FG is 61, 87 for EF, 57 for DE, CD is 35, and this one doesn't look right, uh, BC is 40. Okay, 
now we're <laughs> now we're in good shape. So that's really it. Like uh, all of the um, angles are there, all the dimensions, except for this one, which was missing from the drawing. But it's a driven dimension, meaning that it just. It, in fact, if I try and make a dimension, it'll say, are, "Do you want to make a driven dimension?" So basically, it won't change the model, and it only just shows what the kind of derived uh, length is there. So uh, the last thing is just making this slot up here. And one interesting thing is there is actually a slot feature. So let's add, um, let's do a center to center slot, I guess. I don't know. I guess you could choose any kind, but let's do it from here to here and then give it some uh, size. Let's make this radius. Is there a radius? There isn't a radius there, but let's, let's add a dimension between here and here. This should be 19. And the distance from this point to this point is going to be 24. So, you know, even though there was no radius here, I could try and figure it out, right? I could say, well, the radius is half of 19, or I could put the, the diameter here of 19, but that's not what the drawing says, so we don't do it. Basically, I'm just, I'm, uh, the, the radius is derived because this is the width and that's the distance between there. That's it. You know, it does, we go by the drawing and don't try and uh, be clever about it. Um, the, the, this is interesting now. How do we get this angle, uh, this 30 degree angle between these two? Now, um, what I can do is make construction lines. Now, you can see there's a dotted orange line here. Part of making a slot is that it makes a construction line. We can make our own construction line. So again, I'm going to hit L to make a line. And here I can choose construction or I can just hit X and that turns it on as well. So now when I make this line from here to here, I'm kind of emulating what's in the drawing. There's a dotted line there. And I will just hit the, I'll hit escape. I don't know where the check mark is. Escape. And um, now I can make a, a dimension between here and here and say this is 30 degrees. Okay, it's turned it in the right direction. And the distance here of this construction line I just made should be... 81. Uh, why isn't it? Um, okay, so that is a problem. But uh, how can we get that to work? Let's see. 30 degrees. It's remaining 30 degrees. So that seems right. But I don't necessarily see how this gets locked in place. Hmm. Well, I don't know, absent any other information from the drawing, maybe um, if someone sees what I'm missing here, you could help. But, you know, I could, I don't want to make an assumption, but it, it does look like these two are uh, parallel to each other. So if I highlight those two lines and choose parallel, then of course it works. And I mean, it sort of looks like the drawing, but uh, <laughs> I don't like that it, it hasn't actually told me that those are parallel to each other. So um, yeah, if you, I don't know if you see anything in there that um, that I've missed, then let me know. But I, you know, I think it's possible also that the drawing just doesn't have all the information. I'd be surprised, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, in any case, I would say this is uh, complete, and we can finish sketch and um, do an extrusion. So I'll hit E to extrude. Just click it and whatever, it's five millimeters thick. So there you go. Uh, let me know if you have any information about that mystery dimension, but otherwise, hopefully there were some helpful things in here.